This is a review of mitosis and meiosis. Recall that a human body cell has a nucleus, and this nucleus is full of strands of DNA called chromatin. And the chromatin is actually a form of the double helix. There are 46 strands of DNA in a human, and these are equivalent to 46 chromatids. If you take a piece of chromatin and wind it up, then it turns into a chromatid, and there can be alleles on this DNA, such as eye color and for hair color. Mitosis enables eukaryotic cells to do their cell division with their chromatids. We say that the complete number of chromatin in the cell is the 2n number, or the diploid number. In a human cell, 2n is equal to 46. These are the steps of mitosis, essentially. And after mitosis is over, we get two identical daughter cells. Mitosis is used whenever the organism needs to grow or regenerate. But for sexual reproduction, we need to make gametes, cells with half the number of chromatids needed for survival. And this number is called the haploid number. For humans, it's 23. This is so we can have a fertilization event. Humans make gametes in their primary sex organs. For those who are biologically female, it's the ovaries. And for those who are biologically male, it is their testes. Testes make sperm and ovaries make eggs. And while these human body cells all have 46 chromatids, the eggs and the sperm each have 23. And this is so when fertilization happens, we get 46. After lots of mitotic divisions, eventually a baby can be made. Meiosis is responsible for making the gametes. So inside the testes, you get DNA replication. And instead of just dividing once, such as in mitosis, we actually divide a second time. And after you divide a second time, you get four haploid cells. Each of these haploid cells can become sperm. This also happens in ovaries, where once again we do DNA replication and then we also divide twice inside these ovaries. And you can make four haploid cells, which are destined to become the eggs. Now some terms. It's very important to know the difference between chromatin and chromatid. That after DNA replication, you can actually get an identical copy of the chromatin and an identical copy of the chromatid. The identical copies are called sisters sister chromatids. Now the two sister chromatids attached together are called chromosome. Now every chromatin comes in homologous pairs. So there's the homologous pair of the, the chromatin. That means the chromatid also has a homologous pair. Now after DNA replication, the chromatid makes an identical sister chromatid, but then its homologous pair also makes an identical sister chromatid. So we actually end up having homologous chromosomes. Take a moment to know the difference between sister chromatids and homologous chromosomes. So now, Let's go through mitosis and meiosis, and we will use a hypothetical creature from another galaxy. And this hypothetical creature has a pair of chromatids, homologous chromatids that we've color coded that code for the head and torso and feet. So the stages of mitosis is Ipmat, I-P-M-A-T. 
we've got interphase where we start out with six chromatids. DNA replication happens, so now we have 12 chromatids. Then we have prophase. And then we have metaphase. Finally, we have anaphase, where things really begin to separate. And then we get telophase, where two identical daughter cells are made, each with six chromatids. This is mitosis by the numbers. So stage one is interphase. In interphase, we have six pieces of DNA. We have the head chromatin, the torso chromatin, and the feet chromatin. Here they are. There's six pieces. And in the first stage, during interphase, so we're still in interphase, the cell is basically just performing its cellular functions. This is called the G1 phase, where it's simply growing and eating. Next is the S phase of interphase. Now it does DNA replication. Watch closely as the head chromatins replicate themselves. Now the torso and the feet chromatins are replicating themselves. Now each of the chromatin has made its twin sister. We've got sister chromatins. They're identical. Now there's 12 pieces of chromatin inside that cell. Not six, but 12. The final part of interphase is a second growth phase where basically the cell cleans up after DNA replication and it begins to wind up each of these chromatin pieces and it winds them all up until finally they look like this. So now we're in prophase. In prophase, the nuclear membrane disintegrates and the chromosomes are visible now. So remember, the chromosomes are composed of identical sister chromatids. Now the centrioles, which are proteins that help with cell division, throw out some spindle fibers. And now it's metaphase, where chromosomes line up in the middle. Now it's anaphase, where spindle fibers shorten and they pull those chromatids apart. And finally, the last step is telophase. Cytokinesis is when the cell splits apart, and telophase is our last stage. You can see that there's six chromatids that are located in the daughter cells. So they turn back into chromatin, they unwind back into chromatin, and we're back into interphase now. The next review is on meiosis. And with meiosis, remember we've got six chromatids that code for the head and the torso and the feet. So the stages of meiosis is IPMAT, PMAT, because things have to happen twice for six chromatids to double and then divide twice. So if we put mitosis and meiosis side by side, then you can kind of see the difference between them. Both of them will duplicate the genome. And mitosis divides once, but meiosis divides twice. In mitosis, you get two identical cells, and in meiosis, you get four haploid gametes. So the first stage of meiosis now is still interphase. During interphase, we have six chromatin. We start out with the growth phase and then the DNA synthesis phase where the chromatin doubles 
into sister chromatin. So each strand of DNA now made a sister. Now we've got 12 pieces. So here we are in prophase one, the nuclear membrane disintegrates and the sister chromatin winds up into chromatids. And we've got homologous chromosomes which stay together. So remember one chromosome is composed of two identical sister chromatids. Now, a very bizarre thing happens during meiosis. The bizarre thing is the pieces of the homologous chromatids rip apart and they reattach themselves on their homologous chromosome. Okay, so watch what happens here. It's very, very bizarre. They literally rip pieces off of themselves and they swap pieces. So they first they cross over. Here's the red one doing it with uh, the E alleles and the blue one doing this with the T alleles and the yellow black ones doing this with the L alleles. So what they do is they rip off pieces of themselves and then they reattach. And after they reattach, those sister chromatids aren't identical anymore. Take a look at the alleles that are in black. We've now switched alleles. So these chromatids don't have identical alleles anymore. So during prophase one of meiosis, what the cell does is it starts swapping its alleles. They actually recombine their alleles which creates great genetic variation. Now the centrioles and the spindle fibers move into position. Let's proceed with meiosis. It's IP, MAT, P, MAT. So our next stage is metaphase one. So the spindle fibers attach onto the centromeres. So this is metaphase one. And notice that the homologous chromosomes are lining up facing each other, getting ready to divide. And now this is anaphase one. The chromo chromosomes are still intact. After anaphase one, we have telophase one. Now we have prophase two, where they get ready to do it all again. And now we have metaphase Two, the spindle fibers attach to the centromeres and the chromosomes line up in the middle. Anaphase two. The chromatid sisters break apart. And finally, telophase two, where we have four haploid cells. In meiosis, one of the main differences between meiosis and mitosis is we have this funny crossing over during prophase one, where the homologous chromosomes actually swap alleles. So in a normal meiosis, it produces sperm and egg, each with half the number of chromatids that we need to survive for this creature from another galaxy. And after fertilization, then these homologous chromatids come together. And after lots and lots of rounds of mitosis, then we end up with homologous chromatids, which make a head and torso and feet. And we get a lovely child. But what if the spindle fiber grabbed the wrong chromatid during meiosis? Let's take a look if this happens. So imagine meiosis is happening. And during anaphase one, if too many of the red chromosomes went off to the right and none went to the left, well, then you're going to get some gametes with too many chromatids. This is called primary non-disjunction when the spindle fiber grabs the wrong thing. So then this sperm is going to fertilize a normal egg. And then we get a zygote with trisomy or too many chromatids. 
well, you're going to end up with some really interesting results, such as a double-headed creature. But no worry, the parents love this creature anyway. And trisomy actually may result in extra chromatids in the zygote and in the creature. So to clear up some terms, um, there's some terms that you should know if, if you do some extra reading in meiosis and mitosis. You should know the difference between chromatin, homologous chromatins, and homologous chromatids. And the fact that the homologous chromatids can make homologous chromosomes. Remember that in my video, a chromosome is defined as two identical sister chromatids. That's one chromosome. But keep in mind, if you, if you read other, um, if you read other sources on mitosis and meiosis, you'll find the word chromosome being used a little bit differently. Keep in mind that one chromatid can also be called one chromosome. And duplicated chromatids are also called one chromosome. Now this seems a little confusing, doesn't it? It actually turns out that the word chromosome literally means chromatin body. And so what that means is a chromatin body can refer to a single chromatid or a replicated one. I know that seems really strange and that's why for my video I have just said, okay, one chromosome is equal to two sister chromatids. And I've made a distinction between chromatid and chromosome. But if you read other sources, then you will find that they will refer to chromatid and chromosome as the same thing. So remember, this is a lesson on mitosis and meiosis.